Friday, April 12th, 2024, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to look at the Great Reset of 1789. Yes, Klaus Schwab wasn't around then, but uh, uh, there was a, a financial monetary reset. And uh, I, I think we're going through one. Uh, it's gradual because we're under a floating rate system. We're not under a fixed rate system for, for money and currency. And um, I'm going to reference this book here, The Triumph of Gold by Franz Pick, uh, where he talks about the time that the dollar was wiped out. Uh, it's not just in third world countries that it's happened where you get like a, a hundred to one reset. And the people who give up or loan their real money, gold and silver, to the government and take paper, they get screwed. <laughs> and this is happening once again as <laughs> I'm seeing silver trading above $29. It's only a matter of time that we're going to get to $30. i am seeing uh, gold fast approach, $2,400. The high overnight is Twenty-three ninety-nine, uh, but this is more not gold and silver going up. It's uh, these pieces of paper here going down because there's too many of them, and this is what Franz Pick uh, explains here. But before uh, we go through the Great Reset of seventeen eighty-nine, I just wanted to let you know that uh, my North American uh, Precious Metals affiliate. Miles Franklin uh, still has some good specials here. Uh, they've got a 10th uh, Gold Eagles, 2024 10th Gold Eagles, at only $51 over melt. They've got 2024 uh, one ounce uh, American Eagles, only $5.50 over spot. They got pre-65 dimes and quarters, uh, $2.75 over spot. If you want to get a hold of them, you can email them at info at milesfranklin.com or you can call them on 1-800-822-8080 and mention Mario or Maneco64. For my UK viewers, Gold Investments, they've got some specials going. Uh, it's below in the description. So uh, back to the <laughs> Great Reset. So a reset uh, of late has been more associated with CBDCs, with the fourth industrial revolution and the globalists. But it has usually been between real money, i.e. gold and silver, and the stock market or currencies. Uh, we've seen re currency resets also in many uh, third world countries in the last 50, 70 years where you see the uh, currency reset like a thousand to one or a hundred to one. But did you know that uh, when the uh, United States was created in 1789 under the current constitution, there was a great reset and it might sound great and it was, but for the government, not for those people who lent their money, i.e. silver. So this is what Franz Pick says about that incident. Uh, the dollar was wiped out once before. America's first currency exchange concerned the old continental dollar. The continental dollar was first issued in 1775 with the promise of redemption and hard money. The promised redemption never took place, so they defaulted, basically. And within six years, the quotation was 500 or 1,000 paper continentals for every Spanish milled silver dollar. Finally, in 1789, Alexander Hamilton, he's the first uh, secretary of the treasury, redeemed 100 continental dollars for one <laughs> new dollar, um, the original issue was for over $200 million. Less than $2 million was paid out 
in silver, redemption, or money. The U.S. government was the profiteer. This is what is happening all over again today. And, and he wrote this, of course, in the uh, mid to late 80s. I think he passed away in 1986. Yes, it has taken long for this event to take place, but I think we're in the, yeah, right in the mix. Uh, I, I think it's happening. And uh, it's not that he didn't forecast it correctly. It's just that things can go on for a lot longer, I think. And, and this is happening uh, not because of economics. This is happening because of, uh, yeah, the powers that be cheating on us. And they've been doing it for, for decades. So I'm going to explain to you how this system works. So it's 1775, Battle Bunker Hill. You know, people uh, get excited. They want to throw out the British. Most people do. Uh, and... Uh, the Continental Army needs financing, so we issue some Continental dollars. And I'm using uh, United States dollars. I don't have any uh, shin plaster, as it was called. Um, and, and of course, this wasn't around then, but uh, it's easy to show you what happened. So let's say I went up and um, wanted to help the cause and uh, gave one silver dollar. It was a Spanish mill dollar, but I've got here uh, a Morgan dollar. And in return, I was given this, and it said, you know, uh, it's a sil silver certificate and uh, payable in to the bear, one dollar. But what uh, Franz Pick said they did was that they ended up issuing so many of these uh, uh, over $200 million worth. And they took, of course, $200 million from, from the people who uh, lent to them. But they, uh, yeah, they issued so many of them that at one point there was 500 to, uh, the, the rate was 500 to 1,000 of these for one of these. So when they did the reset, Basically, it was a default in 1789 when the United States was created. Yes, it gave the United States kind of a more stability, but it shortchanged all those people who lent 200 million of these to them because they only got 2 million back, hence 100 to 1. And this is what's happening uh, right now. And very few people understand that the price of gold going up and silver is not really uh, something to do with inflation. It's to do with the fiat currencies really going down the drain very quickly. And I think we're accelerating. And what it will mean, anyone who keeps a hold of these is going to be in bad shape financially. That's why you have to in my opinion, have some of these and also some gold. Um, or also hard assets um, that are useful for survival, like food uh, and other things. And uh, I, I do have, though, someone sent me a Confederate, uh, the Confederate States of America, a $5 note <laughs> that became pretty much worthless as well, as you can see. So it's happened actually twice in the US um, during the uh, first revolution, not first revolution, but the revolution, 1775 to 1783. And it happened during the uh, Civil War where the Confederacy issued their, uh, their dollar promises. And the same thing happened, <laughs> you know, the People would go and uh, finance the Confederacy with their money and get one of these. And uh, what does it say here? Uh, it says two years. 
Yeah, it says uh, confer bear uh, payable. We'll pay uh, bear five dollars, and it says two years after the relation of the treasure uh, treaty of peace between the Confederate States and the United States. Well, there was there was a peace, but it was an unconditional surrender, and uh, yeah, this is just uh, nowadays it's it's just uh, like a collector's item. Again, I don't know what the rate of uh, you know, inflation of the currency during the for the Confederacy was, but it probably was uh, similar to uh, what happened uh, in seventeen from 70, 1775 to seventeen eighty nine. So you notice that he talked about a rate between five hundred and a thousand. So that was basically, let's say, the price of silver in continental dollars. And the continental dollar is a Spanish mill dollar, which is very similar to the to this. And uh, so, I worked out in terms of uh, troy ounce, the price uh, at the time fluctuated between four hundred dollars to uh, just under a th to about eight hundred dollars per troy ounce. So when people say that silver is going to 600 or 1,000, um, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> uh, but things would will be not great when that happens because what gold and silver reflect is the value of things, that especially things that are needed for sur everyday survival. And uh, I know it's difficult to put your head around that, but uh, that's the way it's been for thousands of years. Gold and silver are money, especially gold. Silver is also industrial. And um, it's in our DNA. It's not anything else, in my opinion. So let's quickly look at the markets here, see where we are this morning. It's 8.41 a.m. London time. Spot gold is at... Well, or the dollar is at 122,394th of an ounce, uh, if you want to call it that. Dollar is down another 1%. So the high has been 23.99, the low 23.70. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll get to 2,400 today, later on today. Silver, as I said, 30 used to be a really key level back in 2021. 20, yeah, 2020, 2021. And it might still be a little bit, but if you look at this chart here, very long term chart, uh, I think uh, we could blow right through uh, this 30 level. Could it be today, maybe, or next week? And uh, yeah, I think we're going straight to 50. Almost, uh, yeah, there will be a lot of volatility. But uh, as I said, I don't think people should trade physical silver in this condition. Why would you want to, you know, uh, get trade this for this? <laughs> it's a that currency died, right? And the Continental died, and the Federal Reserve note is gonna die. And that's the way we need to look at it. If you want to speculate. In the meantime, though, as I've said many, many times in the last few weeks, go go to the miners and maybe uh, if you get nice profits, turn those profits into real silver uh, and gold. So where's silver then? Uh, well, we're at 2904. It's up 60 cents. And believe me, we we're going to get days where silver goes up. A lot more than 60 cents, in my opinion. It's up 2%. The high has been 29.24, and the low has been 28.37. Uh, the Dow futures is up 83. NASDAQ futures is down 5, and the S&P is up 286. And I'm noticing now that um, the currencies are going down a lot quicker, or gold and silver are going up a lot quicker than, than the uh, 
stock market is going up. So that's how a reset works. I think the Dow Gold ratio is now around 16 to 1. I still see it going to 1 to 1. I don't know at what price and when. I think Pierre Lassonde, who's like a Hall of Fame uh, mining executive, he sees it at 1 to 1 eventually as well. So what about the uh, other crappy fiat currencies? The pound, the euro, they're going to die as well, of course, versus gold. Uh, versus the dollar today, the, the pound is down a third of a percent, just above 125. The euro is down half a percent, uh, around 106.77. Uh, the dollar is unchanged versus the yen, 153.30. And uh, WTI crude, uh, that's up seven eighths of a percent at 85.30. Uh, Brent is trying to get back uh, above 90. It's just below 90. And uh, yeah, and that's it for today. Yeah, I don't think uh, I'll be doing the live stream on Sunday. I I'm still in need of uh, resting from my surgery. I get quite tired doing things that don't even seem uh, strenuous. So I'll probably publish another one or two, two videos this weekend though and with that i wish you all a, a great weekend take care bye